Hello and welcome again to online learning during lockdown 2. Um, we're carrying on with digital forensics and we're carrying on exactly from where we left off, uh, well before Christmas actually. So today's lesson, the PowerPoint is Acquisition at the Cream Sign 2 of 2. So what we were looking at in the first one um, was the idea that uh, when a crime has been committed, uh, the first people on the scene are known as the first responders, and it's their job to secure the scene and wait for the scene of crime experts to arrive. And it was stressing about the importance of following correct procedure. The first step was that the crime scene would be recorded. The second step was that any fingerprints or DNA samples would be collected. And the PowerPoint also mentioned the danger of the fine aluminium powder that is used for fingerprint uh, sampling, fingerprint gathering, uh, and how that could actually be uh, detrimental to digital devices. And then thirdly, the um, crime scene investigators would identify any of the items that are mentioned in the warrant and they would then pass that. They wouldn't be able to touch them until the specially trained digital forensic technicians arrived. And that's what this PowerPoint is all about. So your starter for today's lesson is our computer contains several types of memory. This should be really familiar to some of you. This would include main memory, backing storage, the registers and cache. And my question for you is what is meant by the term volatile memory. Now pause this uh, video and have a think about it. If you don't know the answer, go away and look it up. I want you to submit the answer to this in the comment uh, to Satchel 1. So there's a property register. A note will be made of each device identified at the scene in a document known as the property register. It will record the type of device, its make, and if possible at the time, its model and serial number, as well as its location at the scene. Great care must be taken not to allow anyone else to interfere with any of the devices, deliberately or accidentally. Suspects especially should be moved away from the devices. Once identified and recorded, precautions must be taken to prevent the devices from exposure to extreme temperatures, static electricity or moisture as these can affect any potential evidence on the device. Any precautions taken must be recorded for each device. So on or off, having identified the devices, the digital forensic technicians must determine if a device is switched on. In some cases this is obvious, but modern devices will go into a low power sleep state when they've not been used for some time, so sometimes it's not always obvious. Sometimes the indicator lights on the device will be lit with a pulse to show that it is still on. Usually pressing the power button quickly or making a small movement with the mouse will wake the device if it is on, but will have no effect if it's off. So if the device is switched off, then a note of all leads connected to the device should be made before any are disconnected. Often a sticky label is attached to the end of the lead connected to the device and marked with a code letter and another sticky label marked with the same code letter is placed on the device itself next to the connector. That way examiners will know exactly what was connected to where, so these can be reproduced later. Again, these will be recorded and photographed before any leads are disconnected. Extra care must be taken with laptop computers, as these may be set to switch on when the screen is opened. If possible, the battery should be removed to prevent them from being accidentally switched on, affecting any potential evidence. Devices will then have signed and completed exhibit labels attached to them before being carefully packaged up, ready for transportation to a secure site for detailed examination. Any devices that do not have properly completed exhibit labels attached to them may not be accepted for examination and may not be able to be used for evidence that is presented in court. If the device is on, then it's much more complicated. An active digital device will contain potentially useful information in its memory that would be lost if the computer is switched off. It is important to try to preserve this. If the screen is active, 
it should be photographed and a note made of what can be seen. If a screensaver is running or the screen is blank, the investigator must make a decision if they wish to restore the screen. If they do, then a short touch on the mouse or the screen should restore the screen. Once restored, what is visible should be photographed and recorded. If a password is needed to access the device, then the suspect may be asked to provide it. However, such information needs to be treated with caution, as they may not tell the truth. In fact, it is an offence not to provide the correct password or access code when asked for during the course of a legal investigation. If a password is not provided, then a search for diaries, notebooks, post-it notes, etc., which may include passwords, should be conducted. Often these will be found attached to or close to a device. If a password successfully activates the screen, the screen should be photographed and a note made of what can be seen. 2. If access can be gained to an active system, any actions taken by the investigator will cause changes to the contents of the memory. So only the absolute minimum interactions must be made and only if they're absolutely necessary. For instance, there may be an ongoing conversation through a messaging application that would lead to an associate or a victim, or there may be an unsaved document, or active connections to websites and other computers. This information would be lost if the computer was just shut down. Each action taken must be carefully recorded. 3. A copy of the contents of the memory should be made so that this may be examined later, for example using FTK Imager. This will make a change to the contents of the memory, but such changes are known and can be accounted for in the final examination. 4. Instead of following the normal procedures for shutting down a computer, the power supply should be removed. In the case of a desktop computer, by pulling the power lead out of the computer itself, never from the wall socket, or with a laptop, but where possible, removing the battery. These actions will not cause changes to be made to main storage in the device, which do happen when the normal shutdown procedures are used. 5. Mobile devices, such as phones and tablets, tend to be on all of the time. In their case, they should be isolated from receiving or transmitting any signals by placing them in Faraday bags or boxes. 6. As before, all devices will then have signed and completed exhibit labels attached to them before being carefully packaged up, ready for transportation to a secure site for detailed examination. Similarly, any devices that do not have properly completed exhibit labels attached to them may not be accepted for examination and may not be able to be used for evidence that is presented to a court. Network devices. Today, most devices will be connected to a network, either a wired network or a wireless network. In turn, this will connect the devices through a router to the internet. It is therefore important that the router also be taken as an exhibit, as it will contain records of communications to, from and through it. Examination of it may also lead to other devices not previously found, which may also be sources of evidence. Once the examination at the crime scene has been concluded, all of the labelled devices, their leads and all power supplies should be safely transferred to a secure location for further examination. At the secure location, they will all be carefully logged in. Now, this task isn't necessarily to do with the PowerPoint, but I want you now to do practical task two, which I've called the crime scene two. Now, it's similar to the one that you spent quite some time working on before, where you had to find images, but this time there are two images provided for you. Please follow the instructions. There is task 2A and task 2B. Please don't look ahead at task 2B. It's a bit of a spot the difference task. So please follow the instructions very carefully. Open the Word document first, and only when it tells you to, open the first graphic first image. It will then tell you to close that image and then open up the second image. So please, please follow it, you know, the way it's supposed to be done. Uh, your submission will be the completed work document and your comment also for the starter. Thank you guys. Here we go again.